Good evening, Columbia. The view from here is absolutely marvelous. 22 candidates came to see all of you. There is no other state blessed with that number of candidates all in one place. You are special. My task is to introduce to you the members of Congress who have joined us from all over the country. We do have a few, and if they would join me on the stage, I would appreciate it. And these members are the ones not running for president. First, we have Representative Barbara Lee from California, 13th District. Secondly, we have my Saroff, Marsha Fudge from the 11th District of Ohio. Next, we have Representative Cedric Richmond from the 2nd District of Louisiana. Next, we have Sherry Bustos from the 17th District of Illinois. She's probably out there swallowed by you. The next, we have Representative Ro Khanna from the 17th District of California. And we have some coming to the stage now. N next, we have Steve Horsford from the 4th District of Nevada. And lastly, we have Representative Joe Cunningham from the 1st District of South Carolina. And because Representative Cunningham flipped the district, we will allow him a generous one minute for remarks. I can do it in 45 seconds, though. Listen, thank you all so much here for coming here tonight. Thank you to Majority Whip, Congressman Clyburn. We're one of, we're one of the few seats that actually flipped the House because I got to tell you, Majority Whip Clyburn sounds a hell of a lot better than Minority Whip Clyburn, all right? We're going to keep him in the majority is what we're going to do. A lot of people th think that... South Carolina is a red state. I'm here to stand as living proof that Democrats, with our vision, our values, we can win in every single county, every single corner, every single damn precinct of the state of South Carolina. Y'all need to be proud to be South Carolinians, be proud to be Democrats, and be proud to eat, be eating fried fish with the next President of the United States here tonight. All right, y'all give it up. Good seeing you. All right. Wonderful. Thank you so much for those remarks. Are we ready for the next speaker? Yeah, I know, right? All right. Okay. Okay. All right, so if Jamie Harrison could come to the stage, please. Jamie Harrison, please come to the stage. And while we're waiting for Jamie to come up, we'll have remarks from Cedric Richmond, our representative from Louisiana. Well, I have the great title of being assistant to the whip which means I just do whatever he wants me to do for free. So in that light, uh, and in honor of the First Amendment, right now he's going to get a free speech. Actually, what he's going to get is a free introduction. Uh, Jim Clyburn is one of those special people. Uh, he means what he says, and he says what he means. And he is absolutely the conscience of the Congress. He is our leader. He's our majority whip. Come on up, James E. Clyburn, better known as 
the husband to Miss Emily. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Cedric. Thanks to each and every one of you. Thank you so much for all that you are doing to help restore dignity and respect uh, to the governmental process in this country. Thank you so much for all that you're doing to help turn this state blue. And I want to say, okay, who is, is Jamie? Yeah. And I just want to say how much I appreciate the respect that these candidates have given to your hard work, to your dedication, to your love of country, for all the efforts that you've put forth in helping to make this party a viable party and a valuable party here in this state. I have been asked time and time again, what is this fish fry all about? Well, let me explain it to you. This is our effort to say thank you to those of you who work every day, not looking for anything in return, just trying to get good government, good people in government, trying to improve your lives, trying to select leaders who will make the greatness of this country. And I hear this all the time. You all know this country does not have to be made great again. It is already great and been great for a long time. And the candidates here today are those people who vine to make the greatness of this country accessible and affordable for all Americans. That's our challenge. And to get us started tonight, I want to call to the stage. Well, before we get started, Barbara Lee finally made it. Come and wave. And Trav, Trav Robinson, come on up. Say thank you. I'll see you. The chair of the state party, Trav Robinson, who just had a dinner that turned out to be the biggest sit-down event ever held in the Columbia Convention Center. Congratulations, Trav Robinson. Where's better, better? Now, before we start, the candidates who are coming up momentarily, I want to call up here one of my protégés. I love this young man. I met him when he was in the 11th grade, and I've been trying to get rid of him ever since. Can't get rid of him, quite frankly. Don't want to get rid of him. He is going to be one of the biggest surprises in the United States of America next year, Jamie Harrison. Thank you, Congressman. South Carolina, y'all ready? Are you ready? What are we going to do, South Carolina? No, we're going to send Lindsey home. We all know about our, con our Senator Lindsey Graham. He's probably the most well-off golf caddy in the country. Lindsey Graham, George Will calls him a political windsock. This is a man who changes his colors more so than any chameleon. But my friends, yes, his spine went away. It, it left somewhere. I don't know. But my friends, this is what we're going to do. This campaign is not going to be about Lindsey Graham. This campaign is going to be about all of you, the people in South Carolina. 
We are going to make a difference, but in order to make a difference, we got to rebuild trust in the state. People no longer believe in the political process. They don't even believe in the political parties. But we are going to give people hope again. We are going to rebuild hope. We're going to rebuild trust. And we are going to do it this year. All of the pundits, some of them are here, are saying that there is no way in the world that you will win in South Carolina. But let me tell you what my fairy tale is. The day after the election, y'all turn on your TV and you flip over to Fox News. And you see Sean Hannity with a handkerchief crying. And you say to him, well, what happened to Hannity? Well, the first thing is Donald Trump is packing his bags. But the second thing is, on the bottom of the ticker, they're going to say, oh, my God, what happened in South Carolina? You know what? Because we are sending Lindsey home. Thank you all so much. Thank you for your support. Go to jamieharrison.com. Sign up and volunteer. We need you. I love you. Thank you all. Thank you, Jamie. Ladies and gentlemen, she finally showed up. Barbara Lee from California. And here is my good friend, Ro Connor, from, also from California. And now to get us started, it's better here. Where is it? I can't, that's, ladies and gentlemen, he's a former congressman. I told a group tonight, I give him credit for helping establish the tone that made our comeback possible. Many of you recall one night on the floor of the House of Representatives, John Lewis led a sit down. And we were told that it was against the rules. But when John Lewis sat down at those, cunts, those cunts, uh, counters, lunch counters down in Georgia, it was against the rules. However, he sat down anyway, and to make sure that the country knew what we were doing, this man, Beto O'Rourke, put together, he put together an effort that led to everybody knowing what we were doing. People came from all over Georgia and I mean, uh, Virginia and Maryland, and we stayed on that floor until 2 a.m. in the morning, and we saw him reestablish his party in the state of Texas, Beto O'Rourke. Yeah. Thank you. How's everybody feeling? Muy buenas noches. I am so grateful for Majority Whip Clyburn for his work along with Joe Cunningham to make sure that the House of Representatives close the Charleston loophole, that we make progress on ending gun violence in this country. But one of the things that I'm most grateful to you for, sir, is his work on the Reconstruction Era National Monument and Penn Center, making sure that the full story of the United States of America is told to the people of the United States of America. Because we know that when everyone's story is included in our national story, it is only then that we can right the wrongs and set this country on the right path. So following the lead and the inspiration of Jim Clyburn, we've been going to every single part of this state to listen to everyone. Going to Sumter to listen to those veterans who put their lives on the line for this country, to make sure that when they return, we spare no expense to deliver for them, and that we end the wars that we are in and bring those service members back home. <laughs> Going to Beaufort, and with Queen Quet of the Gullah Geechee, paying respects at the gravesite of Robert Smalls to make sure that he's in this national story, and to understand how the people of the low country will meet the challenge of climate change before it is too late. Going to Voorhees in Denmark, South Carolina, 
and listening to people who just want to be able to drink the water that comes out of the tap, and they want a federal government and a president who will invest in their communities. And then going to South Carolina State University and listening to people talk about justice where every single person's story is included so there is justice for every single American. If we bring everyone's story into the story of this country, it is only then that we will achieve the great things that we want to do. Universal, guaranteed, high quality health care, a world class public school education system because we get behind world class public school educators. Criminal justice reform in this country, confronting the challenge of climate change before it is too late. So South Carolina, thank you for sharing your story with us, making it part of the national story, and ensuring that this country can meet the greatest challenges that we've ever faced and do it together. Les agradezco. Gracias. We'll see you later. Adios. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Peter. Thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the next person up needs no introduction. He is a former vice president of these United States. Ladies and gentlemen, Joe Biden. Hello, everybody. It's great to be back. This is my third fish fry, Jim. Number three, I think I've been in every one of your counties over the years. It seems like I've lived in North South Carolina for a long time. Look, it's a delight to be here with Jim. It was pointed out today, the highest ranking African American in the history of the United States of America, other than the guy I worked with for eight years. And folks, look, you all know in your gut this election is more important than anyone, no matter how old or young you are, you've ever been involved in. Not because any one of us are running, but because of the man who occupies that office. We can make up the four years of damage he's done, but eight years of damage will be almost impossible to get back. So folks, I'm here to tell you, I hope to be your nominee. I'm going to work as hard as I can to get your support, but here's the deal. Whomever the Democratic nominee is, we have to stay together and elect a Democrat President of the United States of America. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I tell you what, I do miss Fritz being here, Jim. Thank you. Make sure you all see you all. I did it in a minute. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We might have to put this as a day down in history. That's the shortest speech Joe Biden ever made. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I understand that today is National Selfie Day. If that is true, we got the best representation of that fact that one could have. Next up, I call him the selfie man of the United States of America, my good friend, Cory Booker. It is National Selfie Day. <laughs> Hello, South Carolina! Give it up for Jim Clyburn! All right. There's a whole bunch of candidates going to be coming on this stage, but this election is not about one person and one office. It is about who we are as a nation and who we must be to each other. And so let us all dedicate ourselves in this election to making this about taking it back, not for elected, not for connected, but for the people of the United States of America. And we all must make sure that we may be in the midst of a primary, but when the primary is over, we become a united force. Not just to beat, not just to beat one guy in one office, but we become a united force to put the indivisible back in this one nation under God and stand up for liberty and justice for all. And so now, this is a fish fry, so I want to end with this. From one dad to a guy that likes dad jokes, Let's not flounder. Let's get out there and kick some bass. All right. <laughs> that is great. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this next candidate is an author who has written many self-help books. 
a great friend of Oprah Winfrey, and now a presidential candidate. Put your hands together for the woman who is writing a self-help guide on how to become president of the United States, Marianne Williamson. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, Congressman. Ladies and gentlemen, in 1863, at the battlefield where the soldiers at Gettysburg had died, Abraham Lincoln said that they had died so that a government of the people and by the people and for the people would not perish from the earth. And yet today, in 2019, on our watch, a government of the people and by the people and for the people is perishing in front of our eyes. A government of the people, by the people, and for the people has become a government of a few of the people, for a few of the people, by a few of the people, of multinational corporations, by multinational corporations, and for multinational corporations. A capitalism gone amok, a virulent strain of capitalism has corrupted our government and it has hijacked our moral value system. It is time for the people to step in. <clears throat> we need a moral and a political and an economic revolution in this country. In 1776, we said hello to an aristocracy and it's time to say it again. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our generation. A generation rose up and abolished slavery. A generation rose up and gave women the right to vote. A generation rose up and abolished segregation. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our time. It is time for the people to step in. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you. Thank you so very, very much. Now, ladies and gentlemen, our next candidate announced his candidacy in the most millennial way possible. He announced on late night TV and the next day on Twitter. My good friend, he really is my good friend, Eric Swalwell. Thank you, Whip Clyburn. I think it's so appropriate that you gave us all the same t-shirt because I believe our candidates are a part of the Avengers. We're here to save America. The Republicans, that's the Hunger Games. But I have to ask you, South Carolina, were you finished with your work when you made us in the majority in the House of Representatives by sending us Joe Cunningham? Were you done? No. You know what you did? You gave us the majority. You gave us a shot to save our country. You cut our time in hell in half. I'm running for president to bring the promise of America now to all Americans. I was the first in my family to go to college. My dad was a cop. They worked hard so I would do better and dream bigger. We have an opportunity now with 28 new members of Congress in their 40s and under. Let's seize this moment. Will the future be for healthcare a healthcare guarantee where if you're sick, you're seen and you don't go broke? Will the future for college be 0% interest on student loans? Will the future for our democracy get rid of dirty maps and dirty money? And will the future for women's health care say, her body, her choice? And will the future for ending gun violence say that we love our children more than we love our guns? So here's my pledge to you. Ending gun violence will be my top priority. We passed background checks in the House of Representatives because you sent us Joe Cunningham. Make me your nominee. You will get sick and tired of seeing me because I'm going to come here all the way to November to help elect Jamie Harris into the Senate so we can pass that there too. So let's challenge the next generation to go big on the issues, be bold with the solutions, and do good again as Americans. Thank you so much. Thank you, Whip. Thank you very much, Eric. Our next candidate comes to us all the way from Colorado. He has been in a restaurateur, he's been a geologist, he's been a mayor, he's been a governor, 
and he is aspiring for the next office. John Hickenlooper from California. All right. How are we doing out there, South Carolina? I want to thank Reverend Clyburn. And thank you for putting this together. I want to thank all the volunteers that this is really an honor of. You know, I'm, my name is John Hickenlooper. I'm a, a small business owner who took that scrappy spirit into being governor of Colorado. And I want to give you just a few examples of what we did there with that scrappy spirit. We expanded women's reproductive rights, and we reduced teenage abortion by 66%. We were the first state to legalize marijuana in the process. We also changed our legal system. We closed two prisons. We got to near universal health care. We passed universal background checks. We have the most secure voting system in the country and some of the highest turnouts. You should care about that. We also have the number one economy in America for the last three years and the best apprenticeship program this side on the Atlantic. I want to take that same, those same processes, those same successes, and roll them out for the country. A lot of people here have a lot of good ideas. We've done it. And I think if it worked in Colorado, it'll work for the United States of America. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Thank you so much, Governor. Our next candidate is a former mayor, a former secretary, of housing and urban development, a young man who aspires for another housing program, the White House of the United States of America, my good friend, Julian Castro. Thank you, first of all. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Buenas noches. Good evening. Thank you, Webb Clyburn. You know, I, uh, I have a twin brother, Joaquin, that serves with Representative Clyburn. We grew up on the west side of San Antonio with my grandmother and my mom. My grandmother had come over from Mexico when she was seven years old as a little girl because her parents died. She never finished elementary school in San Antonio, so she worked as a maid, a cook, and a babysitter her whole life. She raised my mom as a single parent, and my mom raised my brother and me as a single parent too. And to think that just two generations after my grandmother got here with nothing to the United States, one of her grandsons is serving as a member of the United States Congress, and the other one is running for President of the United States of America. That is America. That is its promise. And you know, in this campaign, we're not just going to talk the talk. We're going to walk the walk. We're going to be fearless. A couple of months ago, I was in Charleston, a couple of blocks away from the Mother Emanuel AME Church, and it reminded me that four years ago, Someone went in there, and he murdered nine people. And then a few hours later, he was apprehended by police without incident. And it made me think, well then, what about Eric Garner? And what about Stephon Clark? And what about Jason Perro? And what about Laquan McDonald? And what about Pamela Turner? And what about Sandra Bland? And what about Walter Scott? We're going to be fearless about making sure that this country works for everyone, whether it's dealing with police brutality or making sure that we don't have another Flint because we invest in ensuring that lead is not a major public health threat or we invest in affordable housing. We can be the smartest, the healthiest, the fairest, and the most prosperous nation on earth. Let's go make it happen. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Julian. Our next candidate is someone with whom I worked very closely over the years. We have been the fearless duo when it comes to expanding health care through community health centers. He ran before he's back again. Ladies and gentlemen, my friend, your friend, Bernie Sanders. Thank you. Let me thank, thank you. Let me thank Jim Clyburn, not only for being a great congressman, but for working together 
to make sure that everybody in this country can at least have high quality primary health care. You know, we've got a president today who thinks he is going to win re-election by dividing the American people up. Well, we got some bad news for him. We're going to do exactly the opposite. We are going to bring the American people together, black and white and Latino, Native American, Asian American. And we're going to bring our people together around an agenda that works for all of us, not just the 1%. Health care is a right, not a privilege. We are going to raise that minimum wage to a living wage, 15 bucks an hour. We are going to make public colleges and universities tuition free. And we are going to substantially reduce student debt. Donald Trump thinks that climate change is a hoax. Well, Donald Trump is wrong. And together we are going to take on the fossil fuel industry. And we are going to transform our energy system to energy efficiency and sustainable energy. We are the richest country in the history of the world. 500,000 people should not be sleeping out on the streets tonight. Gentrification should not be destroying neighborhoods. We're going to put people to work rebuilding our infrastructure and building the affordable housing this country desperately needs. Brothers and sisters, at the end of the day, the 1%, they got a lot of money and they got a lot of power. But we got something they don't have. We are the 99%. And 99% is a hell of a bigger number than 1%. Let us stand together. Let us defeat Trump. Let us transform this country. Thank you all. Thank you, Thank you so much. <clears throat> Bernie. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our next candidate is a gentleman who decided that it was not difficult enough to be mayor of New York City. He decided to take on is something even a little more difficult, and that is running the United States of America, the mayor of New York City, Mayor de Blasio. Everybody, Congressman Jim Clyburn was a civil rights activist in his youth, now one of the great leaders of the United States of America. Let us thank him for all he does. And Congressman, that is some damn good fish. Thank you for the fish fry. Everybody, our party needs to be the party of working people. I have a simple message, working people first. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Working people first. Working people are the heart of this country. But the government is not on the side of working people. We have no such illusion. We have to make a change. Now, in New York, I've proven it does not have to be a government of and by and for the 1%. In New York, we listen to the people, and we have given things to working people they deserve. We put money back in the hands of working people. We need to put money back in the hands of South Carolinians and Americans everywhere. What we have done, we have done pre-K for every child for free. Do you want that in South Carolina? We have made sure that working people, if they get sick, God forbid, they get paid sick days so they don't have to choose between going to work and earning a day's pay or going to the doctor to get well. Do you deserve paid sick days in South Carolina? We, we believe in the Green New Deal in New York City. Do you believe in the Green New Deal? 
We're making it come alive in New York, and we can make it come alive in this whole country. And you know what else we've done? We have divested $5 billion from the fossil fuel companies that put us in this mess to begin with. And one more thing, one more thing. I got sick of waiting for Washington to address health care. Today in New York, we guarantee health care for anyone who does not have insurance. We guarantee it. We give them a primary care doctor for free. Do you think you need that in South Carolina? Do you think people should have to go to the emergency room and that's their only doctor? We need to guarantee health care. And by the way, there is no health care without mental health care. And I want to thank my wife, Shirlane McRae, First Lady of New York City, who is leading the charge in New York and around the nation. Everyone deserves access to the mental health care they need without any stigma, without any discrimination. So my friends, our party, our party needs to be to every American clearly the party of working people. We need to be the party that's on the side of people who have been ignored for so long. We need to be the party that's willing to take on the rich and the powerful once and for all. When we become, in the eyes of everyday Americans, the party of working people again, we will not only defeat Donald Trump, we will defeat Trumpism, we will defeat all the division, we will defeat all the hatred, we will unify this country because it will be a place for everyone again. Let's be the party of working people. Let's be a country that honors working people. And let's win in 2020. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very, very much. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker demonstrates that there's something in the water out in Colorado. Ladies and gentlemen, a United States senator from the state of Colorado, a good buddy, Michael Bennett. I don't know if it's in the water, Mr. Whip, in Colorado. It might be something else. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm Michael Bennett from Colorado. You may not have heard of me. I haven't spent my life running for office. I'm not a career politician. In fact, I was a school superintendent before I was in the Senate. But I, I want to say a couple things tonight while I'm on the stage. Thank you, Mr. Whip, for your incredible leadership of this country. It is an unbelievable thing that as we meet here tonight, we have a president in the White House who does not believe in the rule of law. We have a president who doesn't believe in an independent judiciary. We have a president who doesn't believe in the constitutionally granted right to a free press. We have a president who doesn't believe in a women's right to choose. We have a president who doesn't believe in universal health care and is taking health care away from millions of Americans. We have a president who denies that climate change is real. In my view, we have a president who doesn't care about America. I don't think he loves America. I don't think he loves anybody but himself. And if you didn't vote for him, he's not working for you. And he doesn't think you count. And he wants to take your vote away from you. And he wants to take your chance for free speech away from you. We need to beat this guy in 2020. And the only way we're going to do it is by overcoming the divisive politics that he represents, the rearview mirror that he represents. We need to go forward, united, on an agenda that brings the American people together around health care, around our economy, and around climate change. I think we can do it and not just be Donald Trump, but govern this country again and do the right thing by the next generation of Americans. Thanks for being here tonight. Thanks for having me, Mr. Whip. We'll see you soon, South Carolina. Thank you very much, Senator. Our next candidate, we have a woman who is a reigning um, Champ wrestling champion from the state of New York, the woman who proved to me that they got more cornfields in upstate New York than we have here in South Carolina, Kristen Gillibrand. Thank you. I just want to thank our Congressman Clyburn for hosting us. 
for making this opportunity for all of us to have the best fish fry in the nation. God bless you. God bless Congressman Clyburn. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, the one thing you need to know about me is that I have taken on the powerful and the corrupt my entire career. I took on the Pentagon twice, first over the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, and then over sexual violence in the military. As a member of Congress from New York State, I took on the banks. I voted against the bailout twice. I've taken on members of Congress many times, first by posting my earmarks, my schedule, my financial disclosure, and my taxes, and then passing a law that bans insider trading by members of Congress. And I've taken on President Trump more than any other Senate in the U.S. Senate voted against his agenda more than anyone else. So I will take on the battles that other people won't, because that's what this presidential election is actually about, about standing up for our democracy, about fighting for our values, about making sure our voices are heard. In 2018, record number of people turned out. Over 100 women ran for Congress and won because we stood up to President Trump. Imagine, imagine not just a woman having a seat at the table, but imagine a woman at the head of the table. Imagine what the agenda would be. In order to do any of the good ideas we've heard tonight, any of them, the first thing you need to do is go to the root of the corruption. You need clean elections. You've got to root out political corruption with publicly funded elections. Once you restore that democracy, that power into the hands of the people, so you have as much power as any Koch brother, then you can do all the things we've talked about. Health care is a right and not a privilege. Medicare for all, single payer health care. When you do that, you can pass a Green New Deal, take on the corrupt polluters, take on the fossil fuel industry, and you can make sure that we have lower prescription drugs by taking on the drug companies, taking on the opioid industry. So I promise you, the best way to take on a bully is to stand up to him and fight for what we believe in. And that's what we, this country, will do in 2020. God bless America. Thank you very much, Kristen. Our next candidate announced her candidacy for President of the United States in a big snowstorm. And she kept those snowflakes in her hair so long I thought she needed to come down here to South Carolina to get rid of him. So, Amy Klobuchar, come forward. The senator from Minnesota. Thank you so much, Mr. Clyburn. And you know, the last time we were together at this fish fry, um, when I spoke here, I think it gives us all good luck, South Carolina, because the last time was the year that we elected Barack Obama as president. Okay, so yes, I announced in the middle of that snowstorm. And afterwards, the president of the United States sent out a tweet, and he made fun of me for talking about climate change in the middle of a blizzard. So I wrote back, Donald Trump, the science is on my side. And I'd like to see how your hair would fare in a blizzard. <laughs> OK. But the reason I did that by that river was that I wanted to make a point that it's time to cross the river of our divides to get to a higher plane in our politics. And my background is a little different than Donald Trump's. My grandpa was an iron ore miner. My mom was a teacher and a proud union member. My dad was a newspaper man, and I stand before you as the granddaughter of an iron ore miner, as the daughter of a teacher and a newspaper man, as the first woman elected to the U.S. Senate from the state of Minnesota, and a candidate for president of the United States. That, 
That is what America is about, these shared dreams, this simple idea that no matter where you come from, no matter who you know, no matter if you don't have money or not, no matter where you worship, no matter how you love, that you can succeed in this country. And we have a man in the White House right now that divides us every day. He goes after immigrants. He goes after people of color. He does, decides he's going to send us to war by tweet. And we need to come together and win. And every great thing that my colleagues have set up here, we need to get done. How, we need to go after climate change, right? We need to do something about prescription drugs and bring those costs down. We need to go after college costs and bring them down. But none of this is going to happen unless you vote. So I'm going to end with this. There is nothing more important than voting, not only for president, but for all of your ticket, the great Joe Cunningham, if you're over there in Charleston, for, for Representative Clyburn, for all your candidates, for State House, for State Senate, and you've got to do it. And the way we do it, by the way, is reauthorizing the Voting Rights Act by, start, by stopping what they have done. Stacey Abrams would be governor in Georgia right now if they hadn't done what they would do. That is right. That is true. So my last thing I ask you, I'd love your support because my number one goal for our democracy right now is to pass my bill to automatically register every kid in this country when they turn 18. That is how we move this country. I'd love your support. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, South Carolina. Thank you, Senator. Thank you so much. Our next candidate comes up from, to us from middle America. He has the experience of watching a small town lose all of its economic impact, watching working men and women not do well. A guy I spent a lot of time with up in Washington, D.C., but I turned on my TV the other morning, and he was doing yoga. I don't know what that means, but Tim Ryan is your mic. And do a yoga move. Thank you, Jim Clyburn, and I think we're doing some hot yoga right here tonight. <laughs> Thank you so much. My name is Tim Ryan. I represent a congressional district that's in Northeast Ohio, halfway between Cleveland and Pittsburgh. And I can tell you stories going back 40 years where my father-in-law lost his job at Youngstown Sheet and Tube 40 years ago, unemployed for 13 months had a second daughter, had a mortgage, borrowed money from his parents. I could tell you a story about my cousin Donnie, who was a Vietnam vet 15 years ago. His last act that he did at the company he worked for was to unbolt the machine from the factory floor, put it in a box, and ship it to China. I could tell you a story just a few weeks ago of a General Motors plant in my district that used to have 16,000 workers that is now idle. And what I want you to know here in South Carolina is with when those factories close, I know who works in them. They're my family, they're my friends. And the middle class has been getting screwed now for 40 years. It's time for us to reclaim our place in the American democracy that we have here. And we do this, my friends, by building again in the United States of America, by making things again in the United States of America, by filling these factories where we make the electric vehicles, where we make the batteries, where we make the solar panels, where we reverse climate change by putting the American people back to work. We do this, we do this, my friends, we do this, my friends, by moving the center of gravity in the Democratic Party back to the middle of the country and back to the South. And if we do that, we will send Donald Trump packing, but we will also send Mitch McConnell packing. We will, we will win a seat in North Carolina. We will win a seat in West Virginia. We will win a seat in Iowa, and we will send Lindsey Graham packing, too.
Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Our next candidate is a member of the House of Representatives, but before that, he gave his all so that we could stand here tonight. A man who spent three tours of duty in Afghanistan, sacrificing on our behalf, ladies and gentlemen, Seth Bolton. Thank you very much. Good evening, South Carolina. I am a United States Marine veteran. I am a United States Congressman. And I am a young father. And I do not want my eight-month-old daughter growing up in a country defined by Donald Trump. Donald Trump thinks he knows what patriotism is. He thinks that patriotism is hugging the flag. Patriotism is standing up every single day to make sure the flag stands for something. Donald Trump also thinks that he is above the law. And that is wrong, which is why I was the first candidate in this race to say that the job of the United States House of Representatives when a president breaks the law is to start impeachment proceedings, and we should have done that a long time ago. I have fought for this country, and I will fight for you. And someone who has been fighting for you for 25 years is Jim Clyburn. And I just want to tell you one quick thing. When I came to the United States Congress, I defeated an 18-year incumbent in my own party. I was not exactly the popular kid on the block. And a lot of people said they would be a good mentor to me. But one man took me under his wing, introduced me to all his friends, and made sure that I got off to a great start. That's your Jim Clyburn. It's our Jim Clyburn, a great American. Thank you all very much. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our next candidate. All right, the leader of the Yang Gang. There they are. Hello, South Carolina. It is so fantastic to be here with you. I am not a career politician. I am an entrepreneur and a problem solver. And I am here to solve the biggest problem, the biggest challenge of our time. It is the challenge that got Donald Trump elected in 2016. The reason why Donald Trump is our president today is this. We automated away 4 million manufacturing jobs here in South Carolina, in Michigan, in Ohio, in Pennsylvania, in Wisconsin, in Missouri, in Iowa. And my friends in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing jobs, we will now do to the retail jobs, the call center jobs, the fast food jobs, the truck driving jobs, and on and on through the economy. We are in the midst of the greatest economic and technological transformation in the history of our country. What experts are calling the fourth industrial revolution. And I am running for president to help manage this transition and advance real solutions for the American people that would help improve our lives. Now, if you've heard anything about me, you've heard this. There's an Asian man running for president who wants to give everyone $1,000 a month. And all three of those things are dead true, South Carolina. What would $1,000 a month mean for the college kids struggling at USC or Columbia College to pay your bills and your tuition and your textbooks? What would $1,000 a month mean for the single mom who's trying to create a better life for their son or daughter? What would $1,000 a month mean for the elderly South Carolinian who's struggling with prescription drug prices that are going higher and higher? This is the vision of a trickle-up economy that, with your help, we will take to the rest of the country in 2020. Trickle up from our families, our communities, up. Our, what do you think, South Carolina? <laughs> this is the vision. We have to solve the problems that got Donald Trump elected in the first place. 
Now, Donald Trump's our president because he got some of the problems right, but his solutions were garbage and nonsense. His solutions were build a wall, turn back time, bring the jobs back, and we have to do the opposite of all that. We have to turn the clock forward. We have to advance our society and our economy as fast as possible. And I am the man for that job because the opposite of Donald Trump is an Asian man who likes math. Let's make America think harder. Thank you, South Carolina. I love you. Thank you, Congressman Clyburn. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah. And ladies and gentlemen, our next candidate is also a mayor from the state of Florida. Marymount, Florida is a Marymount, Florida, Mayor Wayne Messer. Thank you, Con Congressman Clyburn. Hello, South Carolina. I'm Miramar, Florida, Mayor Wayne Messam, and my wife of 21 years, Angela Messam. I drug her all the way up to South Carolina, and yes, I'm getting out of the doghouse. So, so help me say, I'm sorry, baby. <laughs> but South Carolina, I'm Miramar, Mayor Wayne Messam. I stand before you as a son of immigrants. My father was a contract sugarcane cutter who cut sugarcane in the hot sun of South Florida for 75 cents per row of sugarcane. I'm not supposed to be in front of you today. I have not been the candidates you've seen on the CNN town halls, Fox town halls, MSNBC town halls. But I'm a former football player at Florida State University under legendary coach Bobby Bowden. And sorry for my Clemson Tiger friends, I caught my first touchdown against Clemson from Heisman Trophy winner Charlie Ward. But I went on, after my NFL career was cut short, my wife and I, we built the construction management company, one of the fastest minority firms in Florida. And we're proud of that and we're grateful for that. And I'm living the American dream that my parents came here for. But I see that for too many Americans, that American dream is slipping away. So let's talk about what I've done as a mayor. In the mayor and city of Miramar, Florida, we're the 13th largest city in the, in the state of Florida, but we're fighting a lot of issues that's transferable across this country. I'm suing the state of Florida right now so that I, as a mayor, can put sensible gun control laws in my city. If I don't want, if I don't want assault style weapons in our parks, don't you know the governor of Florida can remove me from office, fine me $5,000, and my city can be sued. That's ridiculous, isn't it? But I'm not sitting back, I'm suing the state for that. Right now, there is a big oil is trying to drill oil right outside of my city in the Everglades. And we're fighting that right now. As a mayor, we pass the living wage in our city because we feel our city workers should not have to work more than one job to take care of their families. We banned the box in my city because you may have had a hip hop hiccup in your past, so we don't ask the question if you've been arrested, if you're trying to get your life back on track. America, my friends, for us to win this election, we cannot forget the disenchanted. I was the first candidate to propose a complete forgiveness of student loan debt in this country. $1.5 trillion affected 44 million Americans. I'm so glad to see other candidates have proposed their own plan because we know that the access to higher education is too far reaching for many of us, especially people of color and women who own almost over 50% of that debt. We can do that. We have a president in this country right now that is so bent up on building a wall on our southern border. The political will is just that strong that he'll take money away from our bases to build it. So my question to you is, why isn't our political will so strong enough that we'll provide health care to every American in this country? Why don't we have the political will to have sensible gun control in America? Why don't we have the political will 
to make sure that we pass a living wage of $15 an hour in this country so that Americans can really be able to take care of their families. So if you want to support this campaign, I want to thank you, South Carolina. You gave me my second national poll, and I'm only one poll away from making it to the debates. So if you want to continue to help my campaign, visit WayneForUSA.com, WayneForUSA.com, because I tell you, I will bring a championship voice to this race. There's more ideas, so thank you for having me this evening. Thank you, Mr. Clyborne, for having such a great fish fry. I think I had too many pieces, but I'm going to get a couple of more. We love you, South Carolina. Take care. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Our next candidate is my classmate. We came to Congress together, sworn in in 1993. I'm still hanging around Congress. He is now retired as the governor of the state of Washington. Ladies and gentlemen, my good buddy, Jay Inslee. Thank you. That's high praise. Uh, my name is Jay Inslee. I'm governor of the state of Washington. Before I say anything else, can we give a big thanks for the people who fed us tonight? They were incredible. A lot of work going on. Listen, we know that we've got hot fish and cold beer, two of the best things in the world. But we do have a little serious work to do tonight, and I want to talk to you about two things. I want to talk to you about one of the reasons I've always been Jim Clyburn's big fan. Back when George Bush was trying to start a war in Iraq, and the war drums were beating, and the deception was flying, and John Bolton and his crew was trying to start a war in the Mideast, Jim Clyburn stood like a big oak tree against the Iraq war, and I stood with him. And now, that same strength that this man showed, we got to show to stop a war in Iran. That's what the Democratic Party needs to do. And I hope you're going to stand with me in that regard. Now, the second thing I'll say is I think this country deserves a president that doesn't lie to us all the time. Now, there's a lot of lies that can get to us, but there's one that bugs me the most. When he says that climate change is a hoax, when our towns are burning down, when our fields are flooded, when our coastlines are inundated, when he says that wind turbines cause cancer, we Democrats know they don't cause cancer, they cause jobs. And we are going to put people to work in this nation defeating climate change because we are going to make defeating the climate crisis the number one job of the United States. And when we do that, we're going to put 8 million people to work in union jobs, IBW members, machinists, carpenters, steel workers. This is the destiny of the United States. Let's go beat climate change. It's our destiny. Thanks a lot. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our next candidate is also a friend, a former colleague, I had my biggest book signing event in his home, hosted by him and his great wife, ladies and gentlemen, John Delaney. Thank you. Thank you, Jim Clyburn. Let's hear it for Jim, for the incomparable, the extraordinary, the one of a kind, Jim Clyburn. Thank you, South Carolina. I'll tell you, the one thing that always struck me about Jim so I grew up in a working class family. My dad was an electrician. He was a union electrician. And we didn't have any fancy conversations around the dinner table about politics. But what he would tell me all the time, if you care about workers, you vote for the Democrats. And I'll tell you, if we can get back to that lesson, we're going to win every election. And Jim Clyburn doesn't let anyone forget about that lesson in the Congress of the United States. My friends, together we are on a mission, a mission to find the America that has been lost, lost through inaction, lost through incivility, lost through a president who lacks a moral compass. We're better than this. Every one of us are better than this. As a country, we are a country of faith, of goodness, of strength and ambition. 
We saved the world. We created the American dream for millions of people, including people like myself, who grew up in a blue collar family, had a successful career in business, and then the privilege to serve my country. But we did it with real solutions, not impossible promises. And we got to do that again. Whether it's fixing health care, improving public education, building infrastructure, or creating jobs, we got to do it with real solutions and put the worker at the center of those solutions. That's what I promised to do as your president. I've done it my whole life. I don't want to just be your president. I want to do the job. God bless you all. Thank you, Jim Clyburn. Thank you, South Carolina. And thank you for soon sending Jamie Harrison to the Senate of the United States of America. Thank you very much, John. Many of you recall John was here last year. Thank you so much for coming back. Ladies and gentlemen, our next candidate is someone with whom I've partnered in recent weeks to do what we can to reduce student debt. She's got a plan for that. And I want to share in that plan. Ladies and gentlemen, Elizabeth Warren. of the kids who've got it. We make this government work for us, and that means we're just getting started. We need to attack our problems head on. We need to attack climate change head on. We need to attack the control of the NRA head on. We need to have courage in this country. So for me, it's about building a future. This is our chance. 2020, we can dream big, fight hard, and win. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say to all of the candidates, after our next two speakers, we would like for you to come up here. A lot of people would like to get this picture. Of all the candidates up here, we believe that that picture can be the picture we can carry all across South Carolina and help turn this state blue. So now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce you to our next candidate, who's a fierce 
Russell Fields prosecutor, a great United States Senator from the state of California, a good friend whose name I know how to pronounce, Kamala Harris. take us down for a moment. I want to take us down for a moment. I'm going to take us down. Let's go for a moment. We just celebrated this week, sadly, the fourth anniversary of Emmanuel 9. And we cannot forget, and we cannot forget that it was here in South Carolina that we have had heroes of our nation who fought and died for civil rights who fought and died for equality, who fought and died to ensure that we would have a voice, that our voice would be recognized, that our voices would be powerful, and that we would not relent until there was full equality for all Americans and all human beings. And so we honor the Emanuel Nine. We honor the heroes that they were. And it is upon these great heroes and so many who fought for our civil rights, it is upon their shoulders that I stand as a candidate for President of the United States. And I will tell you, I fully intend to win this election. And, and in this fight, this is a fight not only to recognize our history and honor the ancestors and honor the heroes. It is a fight for our future and a vision of our future and a vision of our future of our America. And our vision of our America's future includes a vision where everyone has health care. It will not be a matter of a privilege. It will be a matter of a right. Our vision for our America is an America where no one has to suffer. No one has to be in pain. No one has to worry about where their next paycheck is coming from. In our America, people will only have to work one job to put food on the table and a roof over their head. In our America, our teachers will be paid their value because they are raising our future. In our America, no one who has HIV or AIDS will be prevented from having the drugs they need because they don't have the money in their back pocket. In our America, our children will never have to sit in school and go through a jail worried about a gunman roaming the halls of their classroom and school because we will put in place reasonable gun safety laws, including a universal background check and a renewal of the assault weapons ban in our America. And in our America, we will have a president of the United States who is in the business not of beating people down, but lifting people up. And with your help, we will get this done. Thank you, South Carolina. And now, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> our next candidate, I know you have seen her picture on billboards all up and down our highways and byways, not just on in this interstate. I'm coming out of rural church in Collinson County Sunday before last, and I looked up, there was this big billboard in rural Collinson County, a billboard of Tulsa Gabbard. Tulsa. Aloha, South Carolina. Let me hear you one more time. Aloha. Thank you very much, Congressman Clyburn, for your incredible leadership and how much hard work you and your team put into hosting this event. It's great to be back here in South Carolina, especially in the middle of summer. Almost 17 years ago, I was here 
with a big rucksack on my back and a duffel bag on my front as a young private headed to Fort Jackson. Now I've served for now over 16 years in the Army National Guard. I've deployed twice to the Middle East where I had the privilege and honor of serving with so many great Americans, people who truly embodied what it means to put service above self, people who sacrificed so much. As your president, I will bring those values of service above self to the White House, putting people ahead of profits, putting people ahead of politics, placing the interests of the American people and our country above all else. Now the challenges that we face are great because the rich and powerful have been in charge of Washington for far too long, leaving the rest of us behind. But here's what I know, that when we stand united, motivated by that care and love we have for each other and for our country, there is no challenge we cannot overcome. When we stand united, we can pass Medicare for all. When we stand united, we can take on big pharma and insurance who are exploiting the sick to profit. When we stand united, we can pass criminal justice reform and the federal marijuana prohibition and ban private prisons. When we stand united, we can stand together to protect our environment, make sure we have clean water and clean air, and ban offshore drilling. As your president and commander in chief, I will end the wasteful regime change wars that have been so costly. I'll end the new Cold War and nuclear arms race and take the trillions of our hard earned taxpayer dollars and invest them in our people, in our communities, and in our future. So I'm asking you to stand with me and join me as we bend the arc of history away from war and towards peace towards that bright future with hope and opportunity, justice and equality for all. Thank you all so much. Have a great night. Aloha. If I could get all the candidates, please join us. If we can get the candidates. Ladies and gentlemen of South Carolina, these are your candidates. Show them how much South Carolina appreciates them being here. Woo! Yeah! Where's Big John? Where's Angela? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. I want to thank my daughters, Jennifer, Angela, Mignon, my granddaughter, Sydney, my staff, and those of you. I want you all to know how much I love each and every one of you. If things go well, those of you who have been asking, let me just tell you, Emily is doing well. She's going to be around. We're going to celebrate our 58th on Monday.
Thank you so much for asking.